right, this problem is for you folks to try. We've got this problem up here on the board. y is e to the x times x squared minus 2 over root x plus 5. And I'm asking you to find this, d squared y by dx squared. Remember, that means the second derivative. Okay. I'm going to suggest that you pause the video and try to work this out. Do be strategic. There's a lot of bookkeeping involved here. So if after you take the first derivative, if you start, of start to get lost in the second derivative, if you want to tune back in, double check your first derivative and talk strategy a little bit before taking the second derivative, that's totally fine. But pause the video. If you want to work all the way to the second derivative right now, go ahead. If you want to just do the first derivative and then tune back in, that's fine too. I can see before I take any derivatives at all, I'm going to want to rewrite that piece. I've got a root in the denominator. I want to rewrite that as a power. So I'm still talking about y. It's e to the x times x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half. Negative because it's in the denominator, 1 half because it's the root, plus 5. Okay. Now I've got a product of an exponential function and this, which is just a sum of powers and a constant. Okay. So let's take the first derivative. dy by dx is going to be product rule says it's the derivative of e to the x times that second factor, x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5. Plus the first factor, e to the x, times the derivative of that second factor, x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5. So there I just wrote out what the product rule tells me to do. Now I'm going to go back and evaluate the d by dx's. Okay. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And that's just multiplied by this. I'm just copying x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5. Plus e to the x. And now I've got to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Negative 1 half comes down, combines with the negative 2 that's already there. That's going to become plus 1 copy of x to the negative 1 half minus 2 halves is negative 3 halves. And then the derivative of 5 is just 0. Not necessary to write that in. But if you want to write it in so that you don't think you forgot that term, but say, no, I took the derivative, the derivative of a constant is 0, we're good to go. All right, so that's my first derivative. Now, if I were finding the first derivative, I'd be fine stopping here. I might get rid of the, the 0 and, and um, not bother to write that, but I'd be fine here. I want to think a little bit about how much I want to simplify this before I go about taking the second derivative. The way it's written right now, I've got a product here, so that would require a product rule, and a product here. That would require a product rule as well. I could distribute the e to the x to each piece, but then I'd have a whole bunch of products. I don't want to have to do the product rule a whole bunch of times. The other thing I might notice is that e to the x shows up in both parts because e to the x is its own derivative. So it shows up when I take its derivative and it shows up when I just write the original function. If I were to factor that out, that's times x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5 and it's also multiplied by 2x plus x to the negative 3 halves. Now, this factor is a little bit longer, but notice I just have one product. So I only have to do the product rule once. And I think that's going to be a little bit simpler for taking the second derivative. <laughs> so, if I, again, if I were stopping at the first derivative, I probably wouldn't bother to simplify this. But how far I simplify a derivative is going to generally be motivated, for me at least, by what am I going to do with it. <laughs> If I'm plugging in numbers, I would probably rewrite that as the square root of x in the denominator, because I'm more familiar with working with square roots than I am with fractional exponents. 
So I'm going to put it into a user-friendly form. Okay. Now, as far as simplifying things goes on exams and quizzes, okay, as soon as you've evaluated the D by DXs, you're good to go. You could stop here if you wanted to, if you were just giving me the first derivative. I will tell you, the back of the book will usually simplify the answers a bit, and it's good algebra practice to see if you can try to match the answer in the back of the book. But it's really hard when we're working with complicated expressions like this, it's really hard to specify what counts as simplest, because it really depends on what are you doing next, what makes it more simple. Is it better to have things multiplied out or better to have things factored? So I don't expect, I don't want to um, set really complicated rules for how far you, can you need to simplify. Basically, once you've evaluated all the derivatives, it's good enough. You'll be motivated enough to simplify if you have to do things like take a second derivative or evaluate at a particular point or figure out where the derivative is equal to a certain number. If you have to do something with the derivative, you'll be motivated to simplify to make that next task easier. All right, this was our first derivative. We were tasked with finding the second derivative. So I'm going to just write that up here, the second derivative. Now again, I need to use product rule. Okay. So that's going to be the derivative of e to the x times this second piece, x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5 plus 2x plus x to the negative 3 halves plus, now I'm running out of space so I'm going to just jump down the line a little bit, the original function e to the x times the derivative of x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5 plus 2x plus x to the negative 3 halves. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, let's go back and evaluate the d by dx's. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and that's just multiplied by this. All I'm doing here is copying x squared minus 2x to the negative 1 half plus 5 plus 2x plus x to the negative 3 halves. Plus, from this second bit, I get e to the x, and that's times the derivative of this, which I'm going to just take term by term. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative here, the negative 1 half, will come down and combine with the negative 2 that's already there. So that's going to give me plus 1x to the negative 3 halves. The derivative of 5 is just 0. The derivative of 2x is 2. And now here, I'm going to bring down the negative 3 halves, so that's going to make that coefficient negative. And then it's x to the negative 3 halves minus 2 halves would be negative 5 halves. Now, if all you're doing is calculating the second derivative, it is totally fine to stop here. You have evaluated the derivative. If I was going to do more work with this, I might choose to simplify. Notice, once again, e to the x shows up in both terms. And I can see I do have some like terms in this factor and in this factor. I've got some 2x's, I've got two more x's. I've got a 2, I could combine that with the 5. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit further, but it would be fine to stop here. So if I factor out e to the x, I'm going to just look. I've got an x squared. Do I have any x squareds over here? No. Okay, so I've dealt with that term. This is some x to the negative 1 halves. I don't have any of that, so I'm just going to have minus 2x to the negative 1 half. Now this is just a constant. There's a 5, and there's a 2 here. I could combine those. That's going to be plus 7. This piece, we said, was 2x, and I've got some other x's over here. So that's going to be 2x plus 2x. That's a total of 4x. This piece, we've got some x to the negative 3 halves. Well, I've got another x to the negative 3 halves over here. So that's going to give me two copies of x to the negative 3 halves. I've been underlining the terms as I've been writing them here. So 0 I don't need to write again. Looks like the one that I didn't combine with anything already was negative 3 halves x to the negative 5 halves. 
So that's how I might write it if I wanted to simplify a bit. We're kind of hoping we don't have to take a third derivative though because it's getting a little tedious.